Uh, let's go to the expert as we welcome back um, defense attorney Adam Thompson, uh, who uh, splits his time between Florida and New York. Hey, Adam, welcome back, sir. Thanks for coming on again. Sure. Thanks for having me. All right. So let, let's the, you know, work backwards here. Let's start at the end, what we what we viewed here at the end. Uh, and, and about an hour or so before, she also asked uh, Zimmerman if he plans on testifying. And he said, I don't know. I mean, how unusual is this? Well, I've seen it done in cases. It's not unusual, given the fact that this is such a highly publicized case. And the big question of the moment is, will he testify or won't he testify? I mean, if you're a defense attorney, and I said this before when we spoke, there's no way I let him 10,000 feet of the witness stand to testify. I think the defense has done their job to show that self-defense is a very viable defense in this case and that the jury should acquit. So less is more. So I think the judge, maybe for appellate reasons, to make the record clean, you know, the judge has a right to specifically ask the defendant if he wishes to testify because that decision is purely the defendant's. Even if a defense lawyer says we don't recommend you do it, it's not their call. Ultimately, the defendant says yes or no. So I think to keep the record clean for appeal issues, she's asking him. So then it's on the record that he says, I discussed it with my lawyers. I'm fully advised of my rights, and I made the decision not to testify. Now, her asking him, are there any other witnesses, yeah. or going beyond <laughs> that, that's completely improper. If I was a defense counsel handling this case, I would have flew up the lid and it might have been borderline contempt. Does that say any decisions about trial and strategy and what we plan to do are decisions that defense counsel makes? And you asking our client, what are the witnesses or what else we might do? That's attorney-client privilege to begin with. How is she even asking him that? Well, that's letting the prosecution here in open court what they plan to do. I mean, I would have blew a gasket. It would have been out of hand if I was there. Yeah, uh, ju ju just bizarre, just bizarre. All right, let's move on, though. Um, we had a couple of judicial rulings uh, before the, uh, the, uh, the jury uh, entered today, I believe, and, and after that marathon session that ended t after 10 o'clock last night, uh, where, again, Don West said to the judge, look, you know, we don't have time to interview our, you want us back here tomorrow morning at 9? We don't have time to depose a witness. We, I can't keep this up physically. We're here at 9 o'clock in the morning. We're out at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, she didn't care. She turned her back and walked out. But uh, she ruled that um, the texts from, from, from presumably Trayvon Martin's phone, and I guess that's the problem, uh, texts that he made about fighting and wanting to buy a gun and pictures of a gun, uh, none of that is going to be ad admitted to evidence. And, and the argument, I guess, is how do you prove that it that that Trayvon Martin was the one who wrote those texts is that pretty accurate that that's pretty accurate i mean it is hard to show i mean anyone that has a cell phone knows sometimes friends use it people pick it up that's played with photos are sent on or off of it but i mean the presumption is if it's your phone and there's text messages on it or this there's photos going back and forth, the conversations on there. If you look at the totality of the text messages, you know, if he sends a text out or something comes to him, there's usually a response. If there's a conversation back and forth, it would kind of make it pretty clear if it's him or somebody else. So I think there's an issue with this now. The prosecution objected. It's kept out for authenticity reasons and how reliable it'll be. But the substance of what those text messages says could be important to the defense. And the fact that they could raise issues that relate to the confrontation when it happened. Absolutely. So just like they said Zimmerman knew MMA might be able to fight, well, this shows that maybe Trayvon Martin was a very good fighter because right. some of those comments went to him having fights, winning fights, people asking him to teach them how to fight. And again, it goes towards character. Right. The defense wanted to show this to say, hey, this isn't some sweet kid you see in the photographs riding on a horse in some farm and standing with his dad having a, you know, a soda and everything. This is a guy who is, was talking about selling or buying guns through these text messages, talking about fights he's in. Right, he talks One about fight. how he, he lost the first two rounds, but then he bloodied the guy, you know, and next time I'll get him, all this kind of stuff, which, this, which to was, me is so, so uh, speaks to who this person is. Uh, so I think they have a... You know something for appeal if they if they want now let's move to the the animation absolutely uh, now, that's where it, i was going appeal, uh, yeah, right big right appeal point right i think they have have racked up especially with their claims of uh prosecutorial misconduct i think they've wrapped racked up quite a quite a bit of appeal ammunition but let's talk about um uh, adam real quick this this animation this video i'm kind of shocked it's, it's but it's not being allowed in as like regular 
uh, evidence? It's being let in as what? Some kind of ancillary evidence? Explain that to me. Demonstrative evidence. Demonstrative. I, when I first heard that they wanted to use computer animation, I've seen it done in many cases, but more in civil court. You know, reconstruction of accident cases, right. how a car rear ends another. It's tricky here because you have such a huge amount of facts that the person making this video is trying to incorporate it. The argument's going to be, did you include what this witness said? Did you say what the probability of this other witness saying is? You're only taking it from Zimmerman's point of view. There's so many arguments that you can make against it. The question becomes, is this really something that's so reliable that to deem it evidence? I mean, evidence means it's something one and one equals two. It's something you can rely on, supposedly. If you're admitting it as evidence, that, that's too far to go because it is a question of reliability. But on the other hand, there's plausible arguments that can be made to show, well, this is our version is the defense. What we think the evidence shows based on Zimmerman's statements, uh, good that was a witness from his doorway when he looked out, all these other witnesses, and we think it's fair and accurate. So the judge, as a compromise, says, well, then it's demonstrative evidence. Use it in your closing argument. Okay. And to me, as a defense lawyer, I think that's great for them because if, they, if it came in as regular evidence, the person on the witness stand to introduce it and get it moved into evidence would have been crucified on cross examination. Right, and now they don't get that. Now they don't get the, the, the prosecution has no opportunity to do that. I'm cutting you off, Dave, uh, uh, um, Adam, because I got one more question for you. Um, if the, it, obviously the defense is not finished, hopefully I'm with you that it's not going to be George Zimmerman. We have a minute left. What do you think the defense is going to finish up with since they're not finished and they're coming back? Never, 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 George Zimmerman, but you want to end on a note. The defense should do what the prosecution should have did. The prosecution should have ended on an emotional, strong witness like Trayvon Martin's mom. Yeah, but who, who could they, they end on? Who could they They already just George had the father Zimmerman's on. George father. But they George just had Zimmerman's him on. Father. But they just had him on, and they didn't say they're oh. resting. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, they had him on very briefly. I'm in the room talking to you. Yeah. If they called him, they should rest. That's it. No yeah. more All right, him. well, we'll see what happens. Uh, listen, Adam, I hope you can be able to come back tomorrow um, or and, and, and talk about this with us regularly, but we'll speak to you later, okay?